What's up guys, my name is Lex. This is poker vlog number nine. I wanna have a variety of stake levels on this channel. So today we're playing a one, two, no limit session at the Big Easy Casino. We're gonna be going over some hands as well as some tips and strategies of what I use to become a profitable one, two player. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, let's get in there. All right, guys, we're playing at the Big Easy Casino today. They have a New Orleans Mardi Gras theme here, so pretty fun place to play. They only offer 1, 2, and PLO, so I haven't played here in about a year and a half, but they just got new chips and new felt, so it looks pretty nice. Ready to play some 1, 2 here. Tip number one is buy in for the max. We want to have at least $200 on the table, which is 100 big blinds. That way we can cover most of our opponents. If we make a big hand, we can get paid off to the max. When I was playing 1-2, I would always bring at least $600, which is three buy-ins. If I needed to, I would top up to $200 so that I had at least 100 big blinds in my stack at all times. Tip number two is, it's all right to play a little unbalanced at 1-2. Your opponents really aren't paying much attention to what you're doing. They're mostly thinking about their hand and what they're going to do. We can be unbalanced where we would normally want to come in for a raise with all of our hands. We can limp most small pocket pairs. We can also limp or over limp our pseudo connectors while playing in position. Our raising range and isolation range should be mostly 9s plus and some suited and offsuit Broadway cards and also some suited aces. Our first hand here, we have jack 8 offsuit in the big blind. There's three limps to us. We check our option. Flop comes jack 3-5. We bet $10. Middle position and the button calls. Turn card is an offsuit 10 and we continue here for 15 bucks. Our opponent's ranges are probably super wide here. They can have anything from a draw or a pair of threes or fives. So with a 10, it's a pretty big brick. So we continue to bet. Both of our opponents call the $15. River is a jack. We river trips here. And given the fact no one showed any strength, I think my opponents likely have draws. So we check, trying to induce a bluff. Nobody bites and they check back. We end up taking down this $40 pot. Something that I still struggle with a ton today is losing way too much money with one pair of hands. If we can learn how to bet fold our one pair of hands, we can save so much money in this game. For example, let's say we are value betting on the turn with our one pair of hand and our opponent puts in a check raise, a pretty big check raise. Most of the time, 99% of the time, we are no good here. They either have a set two pair or better. If we can have the discipline, the control to fold this hand, we'll save so much money in this game. All right, in this next hand, we have the under the gun straddle on. There's four callers. We look down at ace king offsuit. I'm gonna let you guys listen to the audio from here on out for the rest of the hand. I gotta make it more. 30 more. 30 more, so it's 35. No, it should be four. Well, then it would have been a straddle now, would it? 35. How much you got? So just put a stack forward, a big stack, three boards. For Good news. Did you bring another big stack for All of it. Mm -hmm. okay. 200. All of More it. than 200. Yeah, 200. Two straight table 14. Mike, oh, two straight table 14. 262. Is he allowed to show one card to me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, he could ask. Yeah, why would he? <laughs> if he wants his head dead, yes. <laughs> if he wants his head dead, yes. Well, let's okay. Have okay. Have okay. Your Oh man. You gotta ask yourself. You got two pair, man? Do you feel lucky? I think you got it. I think I got it. 
Oh, yeah. He definitely has two pairs. Woo! He definitely has two pairs. Nice oh, hand. Uh, thank you. I, I was scared. Of Tip four is a lot like your ex-girlfriend when she goes off to college. When picking hands to play pre-flop, we want to play it tighter in early position and then loosen up our range as we get closer to the button. For example, if you pick up a marginal hand such as King-10 offsuit or A7 suited under the gun, we can just let that hand go. But if you pick up that same hand in the cutoff of the button, you want to be coming in for a raise. Ideally, we want to play most of our hands in the hijack cutoff in the button position. We want to play big pots in position against our opponent so we can exploit them to the max. Tip number five is three betting for value. With stack sizes being so varied in this game, we really only want to be three betting for value. I'm going to give you guys an example. Maybe you're watching high stakes poker and you saw somebody squeeze with ace five suited in the small blind. So now you try it. There's a $10 raise with three calls. You squeeze to 40 bucks and now the big blind goes all in for $110. Now let's say the initial raiser calls $110, now it's back on you, and now you're just in a huge bloated pot out of position with a weak suited ace when you could have just called $10 or folded. So what should our 3-betting range look like? We should almost always be 3-betting hands like pocket 10s, pocket jacks, ace king, and ace queen suited. And we always want to be 3-betting pocket queens, pocket kings, and pocket aces. We want to be building the biggest pots with our best hands. These guidelines are player dependent. Let's say you have an old man coffee raising the 20 under the gun. You could just flat call with pocket jacks there. On the other hand, if your opponent is a recreational player playing every hand, doesn't really care about money, you should be three betting all of your strong hands to get heads up against this opponent. All right, back at the table, there's a button straddle to five. Big blind calls five. We make it 15 in the cutoff with a seven of diamonds. Button calls 15 and big blind calls 15. Three ways to a flop of ace, jack, six, two spades. We flop top pair, decent kicker. Big blind checks to us. We bet $20. Button calls $20. Back on the big blind. He thinks for a little bit of time and lets it go. Going heads up to the turn, which is the five of spades, brings in a front door flush. Not the best card for us. We decide to check here. Our opponent on the button bets $25 into $87, so we can't let go of our hand just yet. We don't really like this spot, but we end up calling 25 River runs out pretty bad. Queen of spades. Now there's four spades on the board. We check. Our opponent checks back and shows ace five of clubs. So he turned us with two pair. We lose this one. Tip number six, standard opening size. We all know that guy who raises to $25. Everyone folds. He shows pocket jacks and says, I didn't want to see a flop. We don't want to be that guy. We're going to be making most of our money with our big premium pocket pairs. My opening size for 1-2 is $10. I'll add $2 to the raise size for every limper ahead of me. If I'm out of position, I may add $5 depending how crazy the table is. The deeper the stacks, the bigger I'll raise. So if everybody has three to $500 at the table, I may start opening to $15 and adding $2 per limper. This hand, there's two limpers for $2. We're in the hijack. We make it $15 with ace, queen of diamonds. The cutoff calls, the button calls, the big blind calls, and both limpers call. So we're going six ways here to the flop. The flop comes pretty bad for our hand. Jack, eight, deuce with two hearts. We basically flop nothing here. Just some backdoor draws and two over cards. When it checks to us, we're just going to check this one back. We're not going to be bluffing into five people. When we're playing super multi-way like this, we're only going to be c-betting the top of our range or big draws. Checking through to the turn, which is the queen of hearts, we turn top pair, top kicker. 9-10 gets there as a straight and so does the flush draw, but our opponents check to us and we want to bet for protection and for value. Remembering tip number three, if we get raised here, we can easily fold our hand knowing that nobody will be raising on this board without two pair, set, flush, or better. We bet $40 and our opponents don't think too long before folding, so we end up taking down a decent pot here at 1-2 with our turn top pair. Tip number 7 is putting in the hours. My first year playing poker, I was trying to become a winning 1-2 player and move to 2-5. I played almost 2,000 hours. I was putting in a lot of time after work, before work. I really think the only way to really get better at this game is just put in the hours and put in the work. 
see a lot of hands, learn from your mistakes, and try to be better every time you play. Last hand we go over here, there's an under the gun limp, we have ace nine offsuit, we're playing five handed so we're going to come in for an iso raise, we make it $12, big blind calls $12, and limper calls $12. This is a pretty loose open, but we are in the cutoff, we have position, and we are only playing 5-handed. Flop comes out 10-5 deuce, 2 spades. We have the ace of spades and backdoor straight and flush draws. The end of the gun player leads into us for 17, and we're going to float here. We can turn some equity and possibly bluff him off his hand later on. Now the action back on the big blind, he makes the call for 17, so that's definitely not what we wanted. We wanted to go heads up to the turn and try to bluff our opponent, but he ends up putting in 17. We're going 3 ways now to the turn. Dealer puts out the 8 of hearts on the turn. This card does not help us at all. We are definitely giving up here, but it checks to us, and we're just going to check this one back, try to get to showdown. River Jack of Clubs, and the big blind checks again, so he shouldn't have anything. The limper checks to me, so he is not that strong either. We're going to try to get our opponents off a 5 or pocket 7s or possibly a 10, so we put in a bluff of $50. Big blind snap folds, which is good for us. And now it's back on the under the gun player. He's thinking now for a while. I don't think this type of player is going to hero call me. He ends up showing a 10 and folding. So it's exactly what we want to happen. We show the ace of spades and the offsuit nine. Show him the bluff. He gives us a pat on the table and we scoop this pot. Alright guys, last tip here is to remember that you are just playing a game. Try to make it fun. Try to make the table have fun. Talk to people, be friendly, especially the action players. If the action players are having fun, that means they're going to be gambling more, playing more hands, especially against you. So you want to create a cool, fun environment where people are having fun, putting chips in the middle, and it'll be better for you in the long run. On the other hand, if you have a super nit at your table, and we all know that guy, the guy who only plays one hand every four hours, waiting for aces and kings, do not give that guy action. I believe that in order to get action, you gotta give action. All right, that is it for this one, guys. Ended up playing about four hours. We won some hands, lost some hands. We ended up in the game for 300 bucks cashing out for $372. I hope you guys like the tips and strategies. I want to make more videos like this. Next up, we are going to Dallas, Texas. We're going to be playing at Texas Card House. So when this vlog comes out, we'll actually already be there filming and making vlogs for you guys. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you.